Alright everyone, so I'm going to need you to actually take 10 seconds to actually recap what are the challenges that cities face. So over here I have A, B and C. Select the options which describe the challenges that cities face. You have 5 seconds starting from now. Alright, so if you mention air and water pollution as well as competition for land and water, these are the challenges that we actually uh, went through the previous lesson. So, what are we going to do for the lesson today? So, since we have identified the challenges that cities face, it seems that these are some of the problems that we need to manage. If not, cities will kind of become places that are not livable or are not very desirable for people in the present as well as in the future. So, in today's lesson, we're going to find out how to manage these challenges. So, what are the solutions uh, for us to manage the challenges so that people living in cities, both present and future, can enjoy living in them. So a little note that you need to know is, in the slides, there are some icons that you will see. Basically, when you see a pencil icon, it means that you need to write something down. When you see a highlighter icon, it means that there is something that you need to highlight. So over here we see a pencil icon, so can I just get you to write down the word methods on top of strategies. The reason why you have to write methods about strategies is basically strategies refers to the methods or the ways that are used to sustainably build cities. So then, that leads us to the question of what is sustainability? So remember that you have learned this in your secondary one topic. Basically, sustainability relates to meeting the needs of the present without negatively affecting the ability of future generations to do so. So for example, one challenge that we'll be exploring today is water pollution. Imagine if we keep polluting water or we keep using water, what do you think will happen? Do you think our children will have any water or any clean water to actually use for them to meet their needs? No. So, this means that it is not sustainable. However, if we keep our water bodies clean and we ensure that we have a sufficient water supply, both us and our children will have the, will have the ability to meet their needs. Alright, so I'm just going to give you 5 seconds to take a look at this slide to make the annotations and then I will move on. Okay, so the reason why I asked you to make these annotations is because for us to sustainably build and manage cities, there are two categories of strategies that we can use. So one is environmental management and one is by improving quality of life. So in environmental management, we have, a, we have two other subcategories, which are management of physical environment and management of hazards. So in total, in the environmental management category, we have four different strategies that we, we can use. And in the improving quality of life category, we have three strategies that we can use. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So in the first strategy that we'll be exploring, we'll be looking at management of physical environment and in particular, reducing water pollution through water treatment ponds. So the way that I want you to think about the strategies that, that you are going to be learning about is that there is a problem that's happening in cities and now we are trying to identify a strategy or a solution to solve that problem. Alright, so please make the annotations that you need on this slide. So just to break out some difficult terms for you, cities have large environmental footprints. These, this means that they consume a lot of resources for them to function. All right. So because they consume a lot of resources, they may also, they also produce a large amount of pollution which affects the environment. Therefore, we need strategies to actually manage the pollution that are caused by human activities. So let me show you an example that is happening here. So in cities, sometimes you have these small farms. And in these small farms, what happens is that the farmers actually spray the fertilizer and this fertilizer, which are chemicals, stay on the soil. So then, what happens when it rains? So when it rains, the fertilizer is 
the fertilizer flows into the reservoir and this results in the water quality being reduced. Additionally, because of this fertilizer now, now contaminating or polluting our water body, it makes it unsafe for us to drink or, it, or we can get sick when we drink it. Also, aquatic animals may also die because the water is polluted. So, how do we solve this problem? So, I want you to write the word strategy 1 above the title reducing water pollution through water treatment ponds. So, this is the first strategy that we'll be exploring. Whatever you see on the slide now is whatever that, that I have explained to you in the animated diagram uh, in the previous slides. Basically, you have these things such as water treatment ponds, which you see in the photograph here, which are large ponds with a lot of vegetation or plants, and, they, and by using them, we can actually reduce water pollution. But I'm, I'm sure you're wondering that, how do, we, how do these ponds actually help us reduce water pollution? Well, the answer is simple. I want you to take a look at the diagram that you see on the screen. So same thing, fertilizer on the soil because the farmers use fertilizer. When it rains, because of the drains that lead to the pond, because of the drains that lead to water treatment facility, this, this fertilizer does not simply flow into our reservoirs. However, we see it flowing through the drain and then it reaches the water treatment pond. All right, so now I need you to notice what happens as when the water is in the water treatment pond. Observe the color. So we see the color becoming blue. So this tells us that the water is kind of clean right now. So why is this so? It is because plants, the plants in the water treatment pond, make use of the nutrients in the fertilizer that is washed it, uh, because of the rain event and use it for their own growth. So the plants get healthier, the plants get bigger, and the water actually gets purified. So when it gets purified, it is then uh, released into the reservoirs. So then our water supply or our water bodies are not polluted. This helps us manage the problem of water pollution. So whatever that you see on this slide here, I want you to highlight the things that I've highlighted. And I also want you to actually see that there is also one more thing that using water treatment ponds does. It is also beautifying the area. So when you have a lot of plants, it makes the area beautiful. Um, and this may be pleasant to some people. All right, so strategy number one, we are done with reducing water pollution through water treatment ponds. Secondly, another challenge that we have identified in the previous lesson is air pollution. So what causes air pollution? We have studied that. And now we're trying to find ways of how to manage air pollution. And one way to do that is through laws. All right, so strategy number two, reducing air pollution through laws. All right, so laws are the rules that the government writes uh, about what people, businesses uh, that, that are in the country must actually do. So cities, because they have a large number of vehicles, they have a large number of industries or factories, they produce a lot of smoke. So this results in air pollution. So what can the government then do? I want you to take a look at this diagram over here. You see cars, you see factories, right? And they're producing a lot of smoke, which means there's a lot of pollution. Then the government comes in and says, you will need to reduce your emission or your pollution or you will pay a fine. So companies, they wouldn't want to pay this fine. So what they would do is, they would reduce their pollution. So you see one smoke cloud is being reduced. All right, so in your slide, you have this paragraph which mentions that governments can implement license plate lottery policies that limits the number of vehicles and their usage. So in Singapore, you have the thing called COE. However, I'm going to use another example to show you how laws are used to uh, manage air pollution. So the government will come in and say that vehicles that are producing a lot of pollution will no longer be allowed to be driven on roads. So vehicles that produce a lot of smoke, for example, will now be, not be allowed on roads and this reduces the amount of cars that are on the road. So in total, this actually allows you to manage the problem of air pollution. All right, so going back to what we have just covered, we are done with the management of physical environment 
And in the management of physical environment, we have two strategies that we need to know how to describe. So when I mean describe, it means you must tell me what is the strategy about. All right. So moving on, management of hazards, that is something related to the environment. We'll explore this in a bit. So inside management of hazards, we have two strategies that we can actually use to manage hazards in the environment. Let's take a look at what hazards are. Please make the high, please make the annotations that you see on the screen. Remember, there is also an annotation above the picture which says hazards can be natural or man-made. I'll give you five seconds, ten seconds to actually make your annotation. Alright, so hazards are events. Let's take a look at this definition. Let me break it down for you. Hazards are events that can have a negative impact on people, the physical and built environments and the economy. So let's illustrate this by using an example. Imagine there's a volcanic eruption, people die. The physical environment, meaning your uh, trees and your buildings, which are your built environments, are destroyed. All right. So how is the economy then affected? Because these things are destroyed, the government actually has to use money to rebuild them. So why must we manage hazards? Because when we don't manage a hazard properly, it can turn into a disaster. So this means that the whole city can be destroyed and the government would need a lot of money to actually rebuild it. All right. So and this can affect whether you get things such as your malls. All right. So let me explain to you the first factor that we are going to be discussing. I'm going to make reference to the story of three little pigs. All right. In the story of three little pigs, what happens was you have three pigs who built their houses from different materials. One day, there was a hazard that came along, which was the big bad wolf. The big bad wolf actually blows down the houses of the pigs and only one house remains standing and that was the house made of stone. So how does this relate to our management of hazards? Some of you may ask. The factor that we're going to be exploring is using better quality building materials. So in the story that I've just told you, the pig that built the house out of stone, which is better quality building materials, actually allowed his house, actually allowed his house to withstand the, the damage from the hazard. So this pig does not have to rebuild its house and it can actually save money and use that money for something else for example. So in the real world when buildings are built using high quality materials they are less likely to be destroyed during hazards for example fires or earthquakes and your future and present population can continue using these buildings to meet their needs therefore it is sustainable. All right, so we have completed three strategies so far. Now, what I need you to give me your attention to is the last one, which is land use planning. All right, so let's do a mini activity. Imagine this is a map. All right, each square represents a plot of land in a particular area. Now, let me add some features to the map. So you see homes, you see Ewing Secondary School, and then you see another home. And then one day, and then you have area A and B. One day, the government comes in and says, I want to build a factory that produces a lot of smoke in the area. Where should it be built? Why? So, what you need to do now is decide, do I want to build the factory at A or B? I'll give you 10 seconds to think about the answer. All right, so how many of you said A? For those of you who said A, I would love to hear your explanations when we meet each other in class. How many of you said B? Okay, so in this example, we know that factories produce a lot of smoke and we have to ask ourselves, who does this smoke affect? All right, who is this smoke a hazard to? And let's also remember that factories can fail. So what this means is that it may explode, fires may happen. So who will these hazards affect? The fire hazard and the smoke hazard. 
So, what we need to know about is we would build the factory at B because it is safer, because we can actually remove the hazard away from areas that are highly populated. So what you have just did, ladies and gentlemen, is land use planning. All right. So land use planning is basically what we did just now. It involves the government looking at the amount of land they have and then deciding which land will be used for what purpose. So in the example, they, the government has identified areas for schools and homes and then they will have to identify which area where they want to build the factory. Using the land use planning, using land use planning, the government can actually take away dangerous activities away from more uh, safer activities such as housing. All right, so please make the annotation that you see on the screen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in the nutshell, we have completed management of physical environment and management of hazards. So in management of physical environment, you will need to know how to describe using water treatment ponds and using laws. And in management of hazards, you must know how to describe using better quality materials and land use planning. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at improving quality of life, where we will have three factors that we're going to explore, three strategies that we're going to explore. All right, thank you, boys and girls.